This videotape will demonstrate the application of the negative suspension cast in neutral position for the fabrication of a functional foot orthotic. We will discuss positioning the patient, application and removal of the cast, and evaluation of the cast. The supplies we need are cold water placed in a bag lined bucket, two Johnson & Johnson 5 by 30 inch plaster of Paris splints, and a pair of gloves which are optional. First, make certain the patient is in the correct position and comfortable so as to facilitate an accurate cast. Bend the knee slightly on the sagittal plane and place the foot so the toes are pointing straight up. Position the foot by holding only the fourth and fifth toes using your thumb in the middle of your index finger. There are three objectives in positioning the foot correctly. The first is to place the subtalar joint in its neutral position. You accomplish this by feeling the congruity of the subtalar joint, or by directing the long axis of the second metatarsal with the long axis of the leg. Do not pronate or supinate the foot, but rather keep it in a neutral position. The second objective is to make sure the forefoot is dorsiflexed on the rear foot. You accomplish this by pronating the mid-tarsal joint at the oblique axis. Care must be taken not to move the subtalar joint from its neutral position. The last objective is to make sure the medial column of the foot is fully pronated or plantar flexed. You accomplish this by pronating the mid-tarsal joint at the longitudinal axis, remembering not to move the subtalar joint from its neutral position. The two splint technique will be used in the application of the negative cast. You begin by passing one folded strip of the plaster through cold water and, while holding the gauze above the bucket, allow the excess water to drip off. After the excess water has dripped away, fold the plaster into your hand and squeeze slightly to mix the plaster through the gauze. Unfurl and fold down the distal half inch of the plaster splint to add strength to the fine ride cast. Apply the first splint high on the back of the heel over the first and fifth metatarsals and to the bottom of the foot one side at a time. Take care to remove all wrinkles from the plaster and to tuck the back of the heel smoothly. Also make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped beneath the surface of the plaster. Pass the second piece of plaster through the water, again allowing it to drip. Fold the plaster into your hand, squeeze it slightly, and fold the distal edge of the plaster. Drape this piece loosely over the toes without bending them. Adhere the plaster by rubbing both medially and laterally to the original splint. Tuck the lateral side under the planter aspect and smooth the plaster. Then tuck and smooth the medial side. Make sure the entire plantar aspect of the wet plaster splints are in contact with the skin, without wrinkles and without trapping air bubbles beneath the plaster. Position the foot by pinching the fourth and fifth toes, making sure not to dorsiflex or plantar flex them. Place the subtalar joint in its neutral position. While the forefoot is dorsiflexed on the rear foot and the medial column of the foot is slightly plantar flexed. Hold this position until the plaster gets hard, which takes approximately three to five minutes. The last part of the plaster to dry is usually under the first metatarsal, and tapping there should allow you to know whether the plaster is dry or not. Once the plaster is dried, release the foot and place it in a relaxed position. Wash your hands or gloves in water to remove the dried plaster. Before removing the cast, Break the adhesion between the patient's skin and the plaster splints by gently pulling the skin upward all around the cast, being careful not to deform the shape of the cast. The heel of the cast is removed first. Then the plaster cast is pushed directly upward and everted without the patient's assistance. Evaluate the cast by checking the following seven points. One, make sure the fifth toe is neither dorsiflexed nor plantar flexed on the lateral side of the foot. Two, 
make sure the lateral border of the cast is straight or slightly abducted. The lateral border may be adducted, but only in the case of a patient with metatarsus adductus. In that case, the lateral side of the cast will appear C-shaped. 3. The inside of the heel should be concave from medial to lateral, as well as symmetrical around the outside. An asymmetrical heel sometimes indicates the foot was held with the subtalar joint pronated. 4. The first metatarsal impression should not be flat, as shown here on this cutaway cast, but concave from anterior to posterior, as well as from medial to lateral. Also, the hallux should be slightly dorsiflexed. 5. Skin lines should be observed throughout the cast, demonstrating that no air bubbles have occurred. When wrinkles occur, as shown here, an increased impression of the foot has been made. 6. Make sure the cast sits as inverted as the amount of forefoot valgus in the foot, or as everted as the amount of forefoot varus in the foot. And finally, note that the lateral arch of the cast should match the lateral arch of the foot when the foot is in a neutral position. This videotape has demonstrated a negative casting technique for the construction of a functional orthotic. The patient should be in a comfortable position with the knees bent and the foot vertical. The materials used are two plaster Paris splints, cold water in a plastic lined bucket, and gloves. Pass the folded strip of gauze through the water, allow it to drip, and then fold the gauze into your hand and squeeze. Fold the distal half inch to add strength. The middle of the first splint is applied high on the heel, with the ends covering the first and fifth metatarsals. Adhere the gauze to the plantar side of the foot and tuck the heel smoothly. Loosely drape the second piece of gauze over the toes. Adhere the plaster to the original splint. Tuck the lateral, then meet the gauze to the plantar side of the foot. Make sure all wrinkles and air bubbles are removed. Pinch the fourth and fifth toes, hold the subtalar joint neutral, and pronate the oblique and long axis. After the cast has dried, release the foot and wash your hands. Separate the adhesion between the plaster and the patient's skin. Remove the cast from the heel and push directly upward while everting the cast. Once you remove the cast, check for the following seven points. 1. Make sure the fifth toe is neither dorsiflexed nor plantar flexed. 2. Make sure the lateral border of the cast is straight or slightly abducted. The lateral border may be adducted, but only in the case of a patient with metatarsus adductus. 3. The inside of the heel should be concave from medial to lateral as well as symmetrical around the outside. An asymmetrical hems indicates the foot was held with the subtalar joint pronated. 4. The first metatarsal impression should not be flat, but concave from anterior to posterior, as well as from medial to lateral. Also, the hallux should be slightly dorsiflexed. 5. Skin lines should be observed throughout the cast, demonstrating that no air bubbles occurred. 6. Make sure the cast sits as inverted as the amount of forefoot valgus in the foot, or as everted as the amount of forefoot varus in the foot. And finally, note that the lateral arch of the cast should match the lateral arch foot when the foot is in a neutral position. Please remember that the quality and effectiveness of any foot orthotic is totally dependent upon the accuracy and precision of the negative cast.